Hi folks, today I'd like to talk about the opinion and the court order issued by Federal District Judge Renee Baum. Uh, she did this two days ago. I did a short that day saying I would release a uh, more detailed, longer video and this is it today. We're going to break it down, tell you what it means to you if you want to carry uh, under the Second Amendment in the state of New Jersey. So let's get into it. So this opinion and order is re regarding a preliminary injunction for two lawsuits. I've done previous videos on these two lawsuits, uh, Coons uh, Matter and the Siegel Matter. Both were consolidated into one case and Judge Baum has issued TROs on both in the past, which are very favorable to law-abiding gun owners who want to uh, exercise their Second Amendment right to keep and bear arms in public to protect themselves and their families. Very good news. So this opinion and order Order, and I'll put links to all this is a win I think for New Jersey residents responsible gun owners in New Jersey she's basically shot down most of what I like to call Governor Murphy's anti-carry law he signed December 2022 she shot down huge parts of it and there are wins now some of the motions were denied we'll get into that so I'll get into some of the highlights. I just have to note that uh, just for some who haven't seen some of my previous videos, this opinion and order is regards to a preliminary injunction, which means this case is still pending. So these lawsuits are now consolidated into one is still pending the court. So she basically, she's issued TROs, which are by their name temporary, typically. Now she's issued a preliminary injunction on many parts of this new law, which means the state of New Jersey and anyone uh, acting on their behalf cannot enforce the parts of the law that she granted preliminary injunctions on. So we're going to go through some of those, which means uh, just to let everybody know that uh, this case, the preliminary injunction stays in place until the case is adjudicated or to the end of the case. I don't know if it's going to be six months, a year, two years. I don't know what the duration of the case will be, but there are some parts of this challenges she did not address because either the state or the plaintiffs didn't provide uh, evidence to support that. So my point with that is if you're reading this and you say, oh, she didn't rule on this or she didn't rule on that, she still can rule on it. And there still is an opportunity for other parts of the law to be addressed in the final adjudication of this lawsuit. So just wanted to put that out there. Also, before we begin, I have to say that I'm not an attorney and this is my breakdown. I, I was a trooper for 25 years. I worked in the firearms investigation unit in the state police before retirement. So I'm very familiar with firearms laws and how this new anti-carry law affects uh, New Jersey responsible gun owners. This is my breakdown. If you need legal advice or you have legal questions, please consult a licensed attorney. Now you can always reach out to your police department. They most likely will refer you to an attorney as well. Police are not supposed to give out legal advice which is probably a wise thing. So please reach out to an attorney if you have legal questions. Now with that, let's get into the uh, breakdown. So if you read the opinion, which I'll put links to, it's 235 pages. The order is four pages. She uh, justifies her opinion. There's a lot, there are a lot of citations. There's a lot of case law in there. It's a great read. I went through it. It's awesome that you have cases listed in there, citations, that if you want to find out more information, you can look them up yourself. She begins by talking about Bruin and how it should be applied and how the state of New Jersey did not apply Bruin decision properly. She points out in the beginning that the state of New Jersey does not like the Bruin decision, but they cannot go against the U.S. Supreme Court. And if you read Bruin, and she even puts it in her opinion, that even in Bruin, Justice uh, Thomas had said, New York cannot just say the whole island of Manhattan is a sensitive place. He put that in the Bruin decision, and she quotes that, and yet the state of New Jersey did that for New Jersey. They basically made the entire state of New Jersey a sensitive place. And she's saying you cannot do that, and she details why. The sensitive place doctrine is historically, we know there are several places that the states or local governments can restrict gun carry. If they want to, they don't have to, but they can. These are uh, legislative assemblies, polling places, courthouses, and schools. So historically, those are the sensitive places that can be restricted with as far as uh, gun carry. So the state of New Jersey, and New York has done this as well in other states, has decided that they don't like the Bruin decision, so they're going to issue the permits to carry because they don't have a choice, but they're going to expand on the sensitive place doctrine and make the whole state a sensitive place. She's saying, no, you can't do that. That's an overreach. 
in addition, she starts off by saying that the state of New Jersey had multiple opportunities to submit evidence to justify this new law, and they failed to do so. They failed to submit evidence. She also says there's not one case, the state of New Jersey could not provide one case of a law-abiding responsible gun owner with a carry permit, or permit to carry as it's known in New Jersey, who committed a violent crime since the Bruin decision. They could not provide one example of that. Yet all they do is say guns are bad and if more people have guns, there's going to be more violent crime. She's saying not so. She also quotes uh, Thomas Jefferson's book, Historically Gun Control and How It Affects Only Law-Abiding Citizens. It does not do anything for the criminal because the criminals don't care about the gun laws. So she points that out. This just targets law-abiding responsible gun owners. So she starts off strong against New Jersey. Obviously, Judge Renee Baum is a uh, pro Second Amendment and she's issued favorably so far with these cases. So let's get into what actually matters to the permit holders in New Jersey. Permitting process. The uh, plaintiffs have challenged certain parts of the permitting process. They've challenged the fee schedule. The fees have obviously increased. Now, Judge Baum has said that the fees are okay because she pointed out in the state of New York, I think it's $340 to get a carry permit in New York and the courts have already ruled that that's constitutional because the state or government can recover costs to do a background check, to do database checks, to do administrative work. So the fees are, the fees will stand. In addition, a uh, challenge was adding a fourth endorsement to your application. She said that's fine because there were three before and no one no one in this lawsuit challenged the three endorsements before. Four is just one more on, you know, added to three. So that stands. The interview, uh, in-person interviews with the endorsements and the applicant was also challenged. She says to interview the applicant is fine because that goes along with determining whether or not the person is dangerous and should not have firearms. Historically, our nation has restricted gun carry, possession or carrying of guns by people that we as a society deemed are dangerous. So the in-person interview for the applicant is fine. However, she sees, says interviewing the the endorsements is an overreach. It's an extra burden that does not need to happen. So even though you have that endorsement that signs on your application that says, yes, I endorse him or her, uh, she's saying you don't need to interview that person. That's enough for that endorsement. In general, she says the permitting scheme is constitutional because again, uh, as a nation, historically, we have sought to keep guns out of the hands of dangerous people. The permitting process uh, allows the government, the state, the issuing authority to determine if that person is dangerous. So the permitting sch uh, scheme in general is constitutional as far as Judge Baum is concerned. Now, there was also a challenge to part of the new law that says that the issuing authority can re request other such or such other information from the applicant. She's saying that that is too broad. It has to be specific to determining whether or not the applicant is dangerous. So in other words, you can't just say, hey, I want your medical records to determine if you have any physical defects that disqualify you. You can't say to somebody, I want you to take a blood or urine test to see if you're on drugs because that's a disqualifier. She's saying you can't just do that. If you request information, it has to be justified. You have to have a specific reason why you're requesting other information. Another big win is the insurance mandate. She issued a preliminary injunction preventing the state from enforcing the insurance mandate. As of July 1st, everyone with a permit to carry in New Jersey was supposed to have liability insurance in the amount of $300,000 minimum. She's saying, no, you can't do that, New Jersey. That is off the table for now. I know a lot of people were worried because the requirement of the new law says to apply for a permit to carry, you need to show you have insurance and also to exercise your permit to carry in New Jersey, you need to to have proof of liability insurance. And if you don't, you're liable and you could be criminally prosecuted. She's saying, no, you can't do that, New Jersey. You can't require people to have insurance to exercise a constitutional right. So that is a huge win. Vehicle restriction. She issued a preliminary injunction on the vehicle restriction saying that, New Jersey, you cannot say you have to make your gun inoperable in your vehicle when you drive because with your gun inoperable, and she also pointed to statistics that the plaintiffs provided regarding carjacking, 
Kings in New Jersey. I think over a four-year period, there were about 1,300. Don't quote me on that. But she's basically saying that when you have to secure your gun with the ammunition separate from the gun in your vehicle, it's inoperative. And that's not constitutional to require someone uh, to have an inoperable gun when they could otherwise defend themselves under the Second Amendment by keeping the gun on their person loaded and ready to defend themselves. So that is a huge win. Now, I'm going to read some of these. She did issue a preliminary injunction on some of the sensitive places that were challenged in this lawsuit. Places are opened up now pending the outcome of this case. And I'm going to read them to you. Now, the ones that she denied are youth sporting events and playgrounds. You cannot carry youth sporting events and you cannot carry uh, on playgrounds. She said that these, the court finds those two places are an extension of schools, which as we know, historically are a part of the uh, sensitive place doctrine. So because kids are there, uh, that's an extension of schools. So no playgrounds and no youth sporting events. But she issued a preliminary injunction, meaning you can carry within 100 feet or a place where a public gathering or demonstration or event is being held, zoos, parks, beaches, recreational facilities, but not playgrounds. Private property. This is huge as well. The state of New Jersey in this new law, this new anti-carry law, has said that you can't carry on private property anywhere in New Jersey unless you have express permission from the owner. Judge Bum says, no, you can't do that in New Jersey. She's saying wherever private property is open to the public, meaning like a grocery store or a liquor store or a restaurant or anything like that. In fact, restaurants are included as well. The state of New Jersey can't come in and say there's a blanket restriction on gun carrying unless the owner gives express permission. She's saying no, New Jersey, you can't do that, which is a huge win because pretty much everywhere in New Jersey was off limits because you could say, well, it's either owned privately or by the government, which brings me to another point. She also pointed out that in this new law, the state of New Jersey said any property that we own as the state of New Jersey is off limits. So highways, even open land, even, you know, parks. So she's saying, no, New Jersey, you can't do that. If you own a property and you want to include that as a sensitive place, it has to be a sensitive place that has been known to be historically a sensitive place like a courthouse or a legislative assembly or school. It cannot just be land owned by the government, either state, county, or local. So that is a huge win as well. She also included publicly owned or leased library or museum, bars, restaurants where alcohol is served because under this new law, you weren't allowed to go into a, a restaurant or a diner, for example, even if you weren't consuming alcohol, if alcohol was served or could be served, you weren't allowed to carry. She's saying, no, you can't do that, New Jersey, which is to me is a huge win. Privately or publicly owned or operated entertainment facilities, casinos and related facilities. Now, let me just make a note on casinos. She's saying to New Jersey, New Jersey, if casinos want to restrict gun carry, that's on them. But New Jersey, you can't come in and just say, ah, oh, all casinos are off limits. She's saying casinos are okay. She issued a preliminary injunction on casinos and related facilities. So the restaurants and the, you know, if you want to go see a show, I have to make a note as from my uh, time as a trooper about casinos. People have asked me this. You've never been able to carry on the casino floor. Not even active duty police officers are supposed to carry on the floor, the gambling floor of the casino. The only law enforcement that are allowed to carry on the casino gambling floor are the troopers that are assigned to the casino. There are troopers assigned to every casino in New Jersey. They investigate financial crimes. They investigate incidents in, uh, at the casinos, crimes. They're the only ones that are supposed to be carrying. So I don't want to get anyone to get jammed up. She issued a preliminary injunction on casinos and related facilities. So that to me means hotels, restaurants, uh, if you're going to see a show, but not the gambling floor. This is my part that I'm adding. Even if you're an active duty law enforcement and you're watching this video, you are not supposed to carry on the gambling floor. I know when I was a trooper, if I visited a, a casino, I could see security and I could have my gun secured in a box and keep the key and then retrieve it when I was finished. I don't know if they would do that for anyone. They would most likely just do it for active duty law enforcement. So if you're law enforcement and you're visiting a casino, you, you should have that option available to you. And if you're law enforcement and they see you the surveillance people are awesome at their jobs. So if you're sitting at a, a slot machine and they see a bulge on the camera, there's a gazillion 
cameras in that in all the casinos they see a bulge they're likely to send a trooper over to you to see if you're carrying and if you're law enforcement they're going to tell you you can't do that if you're not law enforcement you might get jammed up so i don't want to see anybody get jammed up airports and transportation hubs so though these two areas were challenged as well in the lawsuits for transportation hubs they could be considered a sensitive place because a lot of times the government provides security so a lot of these historically uh sensitive places that fall under that sensitive place doctrine the reason you can't carry is that security is typically provided by the government sheriff's officer court bailiffs there uh and if they have a pretty uh pretty decked out security meaning metal detectors and they can they search bags of uh, people if they suspect anything they're basically saying hey we're the government in this building we're providing security you don't need to carry we're gonna find if any bad guys are carrying guns she's saying that historically a lot of times a transportation hub will provide security from the state however However, in this uh, case so far, the state or the uh, plaintiffs have not provided enough information for her to determine how much security is provided by the government at transportation hubs. So she denied that. So transportation hubs are off. However, under this new law, you are not allowed to carry in, a, in or around an airport, meaning not even on the property. She's saying if you're dropping someone off like a friend or a family member and you pull up in that drop off line or that parking lot, you are allowed to carry now to do that. You are not allowed to walk inside the airport because, again, airports typically uh, the government provides security there, whether it's TSA or local law enforcement. They provide security, so that's off limits for people to carry unless you are checking a gun to go on a flight because the plaintiffs pointed out federally you're allowed to check a gun in luggage if you do it according to the TSA standards and you have it unloaded and secured in a proper case and you declare it either in writing or in person orally that you're carrying a gun and you're checking it in your baggage you're allowed to do that however this new law that Governor Murphy signed prevented people from doing that technically if you were okay federally to bring your gun to the airport in luggage technically you could be arrested by New Jersey authorities for just showing up at the airport with a firearm so she's saying no if you're going to check your gun for a flight uh, under the proper procedures under tsa you are allowed to walk into the airport with that gun provided it's for that purpose can't go into an airport to eat at a restaurant i don't know why you'd want to do that but visit a shop uh, with your gun but if you're going to check it for a flight and it's secured properly according to tsa rules you're allowed to do that Healthcare facilities, there are a ton of healthcare facilities that are listed in the new law that restrict gun carrying. She's saying healthcare facilities are okay, but only the ones that are set forth in the plaintiff's declaration. So they've declared certain facilities are unconstitutional, and she agreed with that those uh, that were declared are unconstitutional. Other healthcare facilities that are off limits, uh, she's saying that addiction or mental health treatment or support services, those types of facilities facilities are off limits but there is a whole list of places that you cannot carry only ones that are authorized under this preliminary injunction are the ones that are declared in the lawsuit okay folks so again this is great news so the huge parts of this win to me are the vehicle restriction that's allowed now under this preliminary injunction the insurance mandate is off the table under this preliminary injunction uh, carrying on private property that is open to the public that is huge to me because that was pretty much the entire state the fact that you can now drop off a friend or family member at the airport and carry that is that is great news to me the fact that you are allowed to under this preliminary injunction to check your gun at the airport and not get arrested at the airport for checking a gun in luggage that's federally allowed legal also the uh the fact that the endorsements do not have to get interviewed now which is huge because i know a lot of people it's a hassle to have to get four people friends that have known you more than three years arranged to get interviewed by the police so that is off the table under this preliminary injunction i will try to keep everybody up to date with any kind of changes again the state of new jersey has appealed this order or this opinion or decision they've appealed it but again this case is still pending so this preliminary injunction stands until the end of the case where most likely she will issue a final permanent injunction we hope on a vast part of this new law but until then i think this is great news there these are huge wins uh, stay tuned folks if you like this video please hit the like button and share it with anyone you think will want to see it also uh, consider subscribing if you haven't already hit that notification bell so you know when we release new videos thanks for watching take care and stay safe